really pleased to welcome everyone here today. We have a very distinguished uh, community today that has gathered today in our event. We're going to have a very highly qualified professional discussion on the de decentralization reform in Eastern Ukraine's perspective. This event has been held in the frame of work of the Ukrainian Reform Conference, and it has been held with the support of the RPR coalition in partnerships with the Embassy of Lithuania to Ukraine and the International Humanitarian Organization People in Need. Um, the event is supported by the Ministry of Global Affairs Lithuania and we are going to be in this hour and a half discussing the issues of decentralization and we're going to be discussing the issues of decentralization, how they are interconnected with everything that is currently happening in Donetsk and Lugansk region that are closer to the concept line. There are the processes that are being held in the territories com controlled by the government. We're going to be speaking about those challenges in the social humanities and managing administrative spheres that can be now seen in context of the decentralization reform that is being held as well. And the people in need and um, the authors of the main briefing that is going to be the basis of our discussion today. They are hoping for your thoughts and your ideas from this text as well. I do hope that you had had the opportunity to read throughout this text, and I hope that your ideas will be voiced out and your ideas will be added to the briefing itself. In just a minute, I would like to pass the floor to our interpreter and our technical team on some of the technical aspects of our today's collaboration. Uh, my name is Yulia Tyshenko, and I am uh, the representative of UMPD Mission. I am moderator of our today's event. So please, uh, yes, thank you very much. So dear participants, please make sure that you note down at the lower panel, you can see the globe like icon that says interpretation. Please choose the English channel if you would like to listen to the English interpretation. Read canal Angliska English. And uh, I would like to ask our English speaking participants to select interpretation English. Click on the panel below in Zoom, the icon of globe interpretation English. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for this notification. And I would like to as well note your attention that we have chat as well at the lower panel. You can see that. You can voice out your opinions there, raise some questions to provide the discussion to the questions that have already been voiced out. So basically, we are going to be uh, voicing out and reading out the questions that have been noted down in chat as well. So. Basically, we would like to go through the introductory speeches, first of all, and we're going to have a very concentrated agenda today, and I would like to pass the floor to Samir Jacques Shalhoub, who is the Advocacy Manager for People in Need and Access Consortium. So please, Samir, the floor is yours. First of all, we're pleased to welcome you here today and thank you very much for all of the materials that you have provided to us and all of your tremendous work that you have done to accumulate those materials. And now we have this great opportunity for you to share your thoughts and those materials. Please, Samir, the floor is yours. You will have around five, seven minutes, if we may, to do that. Try to do that very concentrated. If I may, I will try to interrupt you with the timing because you have lots of things to cover. Please, thank you. Thank you very much, dear Julia, uh, and uh, good day, dear uh, Excellencies, partners, uh, participants. Thank you uh, for joining us on this very needed discussion today. It is um, also a big pleasure to meet with the uh, colleagues again, including uh, Deputy Prime Minister Oleg Sevestikov and uh, colleagues from the Donetsk and Lugansk Oblast Administrations, uh, the State Building and Local Governance Committee of Vrerov Narada and other colleagues from the Vrerov Narada as well. Uh, RPR, who, thanks to whom uh, this event was made possible today, our active representatives from civil society, uh, the Access Consortium colleagues, uh, thanks again for your active engagement. I'm pretty sure I forgot uh, many names, but, uh, but I will make it up to you. Um, as you know, uh, we are uh, just a few days ahead of the long-awaited Ukraine Reform Conference. And um, we believe with our partners, uh, mostly present today, that while this is another renewed opportunity to check 
and uh, discuss the situation vis-a-vis -vis reforms and progress in Ukraine. The eastern parts of the country deserve a special attention and special considerations due the security, social and humanitarian climate that unfortunately continues to perpetuate further uncertainties in the region. Looking at the bright side, Kyiv has demonstrated its willingness to ensure a successful transition and decentralization process all across Ukraine at several occasions. Oblast administrations, notably Donetsk and Lugansk, have uh, taken responsibility to comply with national policies and strategies and plan accordingly. However, sometimes, despite the uh, good intentions, uh, this transition has uh, come with significant challenges and gaps felt directly by conflict-affected women, men and people in their diversity for simple reasons that civilians have been experiencing years of an ongoing crisis in the region and are paying the price for a conflict they've never signed up for. Needless to mention that the coronavirus pandemic has deliberately weakened social and health structures and services and continues to threaten thousands of lives. These people should never be left behind and should be on top of the decentralization agenda. At the same time, we've witnessed an increased advocacy by civil society actors and their engagement with local and regional authorities particularly in the framework of the Vilnius Task Force. We are looking forward to confirming with the like-minded partners today that a successful decentralization process is only achieved through joint government civil society cooperation with support from the international community as necessary. That said, both Kyiv and Ukraine's international partners should scale up their support to Lugansk and Donetsk and civil society in the region to ensure transition plans are in favor of meeting people's basic needs and rights instead of being interrupted and restricted as has been recently documented and voiced by residents of some of the negatively affected Khromadas. This is also an incredible opportunity to realizing the famous humanitarian development and peace nexus transition in Eastern Ukraine. Today, and um, as a result of a promising cooperation between the Access Consortium, the reanimation package of reforms, the Venus Task Force, Vostok Source, the Coalition on the Frontline, the Ministry for Integration of Temporarily Occupied Territories, the State Building um, and Local Governance Parliamentary Committee, the Donetsk and Lugansk Oblast Administrations, most importantly, civil society as well, my colleague uh, Maria Sinenka will be presenting a semi-final semi draft policy paper on decentralization in the context of Eastern Ukraine with tangible recommendations for us all to reflect on and consider throughout this transition. The paper will take into account outcomes of the discussion today prior to being published so I hope for an open and active discussion facilitated by our moderator, Yulia Tichenko, and uh, with big thanks. And we also stand ready to support the implementation of these recommendations. I'd like to thank uh, the Ministry for Foreign Affairs of Lithuania and our longtime partner, DG ECHO, for their continuous trust and support. And of course, our interpreters for today. Thank you very, very much. I wish everyone a very fruitful discussion and um, please stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Samir, for this introduction. And thank you very much for recalling the partner. And thank you very much for noting down your attention to those problems that are currently the citizens that live at the governmentally controlled territories are going through. And of course, we understand that we would like to have a very interesting discussion today because we have the representatives of the government, the vice prime minister of Ukraine, uh, the minister of the reintegration of the temporary occupied territories, Mr. Reznikov, the MPs of Ukraine, the representatives of the civil society organization and the RPR, one of the organization, organizations today. 
And I would like to pass the floor to Yulia Karachenko here, who is the co-chair of the coalition of the reanimator package of reform. So please, Yulia, the floor is yours. You have five, six minutes to start. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yulia. First of all, I would like to welcome all of the speakers who have joined us today in this discussion. I'm pleased to welcome all of the participants of our today, today's discussion on behalf of the reanimation package of reforms as the head of the coalition, as a co-chair of the coalition of the uh, reform packages of Ukraine. I'm really grateful to our partners, um, the Foreign Affairs Lithuania, the Embassy of Lithuania, International Humanitarian Organization, people in need that have joined us today. I would like to once again remind you that this event is being supported by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Lithuania. So we're really grateful for them as well. I would like to maybe remind you on my behalf that uh, the reform, the, the, the reform, the package of Ukrainian reforms in the framework of Ukraine reforms conference has prepared the analytical briefs as well on a very important issues as well. We have updated the information on most of the reforms and policies, and you can find them at a separate resource that has been created especially for that, uareforms.org. And you can find them at our website as well. So you can take a look at those analytical briefs as well. Uh, we have also had created a monitoring report as well. So all of those recommendations by the independent experts from civil society organizations, whether they have been completed in most of the reforms or no, or if there are some um, risks that the experts see, we have outlined those risk, risks as well. So we do hope that we're going to be a very good friend of our state and will be able to build a sustainable democracy in Ukraine and will be able to become a part, a very good part of the European space overall. Today, we're going to be discussing the issue of decentralization, and we have already seen that, and we have already understood that we have currently have the temporarily occupied territories occupied by the Russian Federation, and uh, the international humanitarian organization people in need are operated in the international terms, like the territory that is no non-governmental control and territory, and the position of our organization is very sustainable, that it is because of the aggressive policies of Russian Federation. We currently have the temporarily occupied territory of Dog Donetsk and Lugansk regions of Ukraine. And I do believe that the experts might have seen that the centralizations needs a separate research for Donetsk and Lugansk region, especially for the territories that are close to the contact line that have multiple other problems that um, fortunately are not seen by other territories of Ukraine and we do hope that Donetsk and Lugansk regions will be able to overcome those difficulties as well. I'm really pleased to welcome you all once again with uh, this um, discussion. I do hope we'll have a productive discussion and I will do hope that we will find the ways to help the, for the people, the citizens who live at those territories. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Yulia. Thank you very much for being brief and thank you outlining of the main activities for the reanimation reform package and thank you very much for outlining the issues of uh, reintegration and deoccupation uh, for the temporarily occupied territories thank you very much for your attention to those terms as well and thank you very much for your organizations for the development of those important texts as well i would like to pass the floor uh, to Oleksii Reznikov, the Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine, the Minister of the Reintegration of Temporarily Occupied Territories of Ukraine. And we would like to give him the floor on how he sees the certain problems, because basically the issues of the free territories, the issues of um, the territories that are neighboring to the zone of conflict is one of the priorities for the ministry's activity. And I do know that in those strategic strategy of the economical and social development for the region, it has been outlined. So we would like to know in what way the issues that have been depicted in the report are now being reflected in the activities of the ministry in those policy directions. So please, Mr. Resnik of the floor is yours. Uh, yeah, you have to speak into the mic, please. We can't hear you. You must be muted. Yes, right now everything should be working properly. Yes, now we can hear you. Thank you. 
Yes, thank you. We have this triple protection from the mic. Uh, thank you very much, Yulia, for giving me the floor. I'm pleased to welcome and pleased to greet all of the colleagues who I'm seeing on the screen right now. I've tried to take a look at all of the people who have been connected to us and who have heard their cameras turned on. I would like to once again say that personally me and uh, on behalf of all of the ministries, I would like to say that we are really true. We're really cherishing all of the recommendations that have been provided to us from the non-governmental sector. And I would like to thank Ms. Yulia Tyshenko for participating in the work of the Aboriginal peoples of Ukraine. And you know, it has been already successfully voted by Ukrainian parliament last week, even though there has been a strong opposition from the pro Kremlin powers who have said that is basically going to be for the for the worst of Ukraine. It, but it is a victory for us. The issues of decentralization is very important for me because um, when I've turned from a uh, lawyer to become the uh, governmental officer, and you know, I have been the speaker of the local parliament in Kiev region, and I have been the deputy head of the city mayor of Kiev. So I know what you're talking about when you speak about the decentralization. I have run through this document that has been presented to us for the discussion, and I wanted to outline a couple of the moments, the positive and critical moments, which I would like to ask you to outline as well. First of all, it's a pleasure for me to see that most of the recommendations are being made out of the things that we're either doing already or planning to do. That is very important for us because your recommendations and your offers are sometimes being already implemented by the ministry. And this gives us the clearer understanding that we share the same philosophy and I do believe share the same ideology in dealing with the problems. And Yule has already outlined we're finalizing the work on strategy of the economical development for Lugansk and Donetsk regions. The strategy has been built based on the strategy that has been approved by the government December last year. Right now, it's been already approved uh, by most of the directorates of the ministries. I do hope that we will overcome uh, some of the challenges by the Ministry of Finance, because they always have a lot of issues with our ideas, but we do hope we're going to have a positive vote in the government in the closest time as possible, and we're going to drive, the, drive this draft law to the parliament so that in 2022, the strategy would be brought to life. What it will mean for us, first of all, and the main for us, the main essence of the strategy is, and the key idea is to start the active development of the communities that are located on the territories that have been affected by the war, implementing most of the reforms that are currently being postponed because of the lack of the money and the lack of the resources. So that is why we currently understand that improving the community, starting from this 15 that we have on the contact line and all of the other communities that are located on the territory of Logansk and Donetsk regions that are being controlled by Ukrainian government, their development is the main idea idea. No dotations, no loans to build in for the capacities, but engaging investments so that those local communities would start to grow. Those local communities were going to be developing and building their power, building their strengths, building up additional jobs, providing the tax taxes support. This is very important. The next issue is about communication, fighting the informational aggression that is a part of the war that the Russian Federation has started in 2014 against Ukraine. And in this the ministry have changed their approach on the support that we provide for the broadcasting, the broadcasting that should have been provided for the temporarily occupied territories. This uh, broadcasting and mostly media broadcastings are being done by volunteers. Right now, we have had already sp uh, spoken about the needed budget in the parliament, and we have started this tendering pro procedures for the financial support for the media broadcasting for the local broadcasters on the territories of Donetsk and Lugansk regions. We have already had contacts um, established for their children television and additional television channels in Crimea and Tatar language for the Crimea. And we're going to have the same tenders provided for Donetsk and Lugansk regions for both municipally owned broadcasters and private owned broadcasters. It's not about beneficiaries, it's about the content that they're going to be producing and they're going to be bringing up for the overall media sphere and media environment on the temple occupied territories. It is very important for us, so that is why we are fighting for everything, for the high quality mobile connection in Donetsk and Lugansk region, for getting internet to each of the households together with the Ministry of Digital Transformation. We are 
would like to provide the internet connection and providing the access to the informational field to each of the communities that lives in the uh, contact line. Now, uh, another important moment, moments of criticism a little bit. Point one, um, the collision line and the freedom of movement. I was surprised by paragraph two, so that is why I would like to outline the attention to the authors of this report because I strongly disagree with the outcomes that you have had. Either there was the mistakes in interpretation or that was a really strict ideological mistakes. The text says that starting from uh, March 2020, the Ukrainian government has stopped the movement uh, between uh, the P for the people and the cars from the sides of the temporarily occupied territories. There are some limitations, it says, and this government de facto blocks the uh, transport connection in Donetsk and Lugan Lugansk regions in the checkpoints. I would like to say that is a nonsense. As a member of that tri tri as a owner of the three-sided contact group and as a matter of government, I said, I'll said i tell you that we have built the two big checkpoints in Shasta. And if the authors of this research haven't visited that, so please come and check it out. And starting from uh, July 10, the, the, they're going to be open and they have been working uh, by all of the custom services and they're being blocked by the occupational regimes that are being controlled by the Russian Federation. So if in your uh, in your report it says that Ukrainian government blocks the transportation moment, then it is nonsense. I would like to ask you to take a look at this paragraph. If you have different doubts, so please take a look in Shastya and Zolota checkpoints and ask who is actually being stopping them from trespassing these checkpoints. They're being stopped by the occupational regime. So I would like to ask you in a very professional and responsible way to treat your job and especially to treat it in this report. But this is basically, we are trying to do everything as possible to preserve the contacts between people from both sides of the territories because the strategies for the Russian Federation is to tear down those contacts, do not give the opportunity for those people that have been now held as hostages in the temporarily occupied territories, do not give them the opportunity to see how Ukraine de de develops. Now we have tried to do everything that is possible to provide the additional services to those people. At the checkpoints, we're starting to have the snaps, the administrative buildings for the administrative services provision, the banks, additional administrative services. So to say right now that we're blocking something, this is some kind of a disrespect, at least from the people who have written this paragraph. So I'm not going to be, um, I'm sorry for this kind of very high emotional reaction because it really hurt me to read this out. So right now we are speaking that all of the checkpoints they have to be modernized and the current service zone that has been created as a pilot in Shastya and Novotroitsk is going to become the standard for all of the crossing points as in Kherson region with Crimea as the same in Donetsk and Lugansk regions. The new updated checkpoint, um, the checkpoint that is going to be updated and renovated is going to be in Stanitsa Luhanska this autumn. The works have already, the restoration and the renovation works have already been started. Then there's going to be the regime zone, the new updated region zone with the usage of the online services has already been brought up there. And the new service zone is going to be brought up there. So Shasta, it's basically, it's not just the title for um, the for the settlement, for the residential settlement, it's also going to be our standard. So right now, we are stating that even despite the opposition and the resistance of the occupation government, we're trying to do everything that's possible to support the people. Starting with a support program for the children that would like to get their education in the Ukrainian uh, educational establishments. The centers Ukraine Donbass. We have now negotiations with more than a hundred universities that will enroll the students without the external evaluation tests results. We're currently supporting the people who have lived in the temporarily occupied territories and if they're going through the territory of Russian federations and the custom service, they have to find them because it's considered to be violations. Based on our initiative, we had this amendment voted in the parliament. They're not going to be fined. So what is important for us in the context of the system decentralization as well? We want to have the professional discussions and we want to have the high level of responsibility and accountability and commitment from the local authorities. 
we have a lot of programs for IDPs and we have a lot of uh, money that are going to be help helping us uh, for our partners. We have a lot of uh, funds and grants for, for example, find, for providing the additional accommodations for the IDPs. But it has to be done in close collaboration with the local communities with the special subvents subventions be provided. Only with the great support of the local authorities, we can provide the effective programs for the IDPs. Moreover, it is much more important for them to provide a comfortable living in Donetsk and Logansk region because it's even going to be mentally more comfortable for them because it's their own region and everything is clearer for them there. If you will take a look at the map of the overall uh, placements of the internally displaced persons in Ukraine, 1.5 million people, almost 1 million are living in the free Ukraine because around 60,000 people were forced to come back to the temporarily occupied territories. They didn't find the accommodation, they didn't find the jobs. But out of those 1 million people, around 40, 400,000 people live in Donetsk and Lugansk regions. And I do believe that Mr. Haidayo and Mr. Kirilenko, who is going to be representing the um, local administrations, uh, from, they're going to give you an updated number on the number of the displaced persons in their regions. So the main idea from us is to establish the good collaboration from the central government and the local governments and with the support of the expert and non-governmental social organizations i'm sure that we'll be able to create this very comfortable landscape for the people because whatever we do any kind of reintegration that we go in it is first of all about the people and then on getting the territory that is all i would like to wish for all of us Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your introductory speech. Um, that was basically clearly defining the position of Ukrainian party and basically that all the outlining those challenges about um, the problems that we're currently facing, very painful problems for the districts that are currently on the contact line. We also have some of the comments in the chat as well uh, on some administrative limits for the territorial communities and of course if we're going to have this opportunity if you're going to stay with us Mr. Reznikov so maybe someone would like to cover this question from your side so whether you're going to be trying to amend those mistakes that have been proven by the uh, cabinet of ministry decree uh, for uh, the committee de cabinet of ministers decree for 86R from April 2020 so basically we know that the issue of Decentralization is also the part of the reintegration policies as well, especially for the territories that we're currently discussing. Thank you very much for your introductory um, notes and thank you very much for your overall notes. And I would like to pass the floor to Maria Sedenko, who's going to be representing the People in Need organization. And we would like to pass the floor for her for uh, the presentation of the analytical brief, the text that has been preferred, please. So, Marina, you will have around uh, 10 minutes, please. Yes, thank you very much, Julia. And if I may ask you, so if I will take a couple of more minutes more, then um, please try to be patient. Yes, I'm really grateful to Alexey for his presentation. It is a pleasure that he has read out our document on the decentralization policies. That's very important for us. We have seen that the Ministry on the Reintegration of the Temporarily Occupied Territories of Ukraine has been very active in the recent times, and we should mention that. And I see that there is a lot of plans as well, and which is very good. And of course, um, we are going to be continuing working on our documents and policy-wise, we're going to amend some of the issues and we're going to amend um, this mistakes that Alexei has noted down. I think that maybe that has been an issue of translation possibly, but we're going to be reworking on that as well. And it's very good that this uh, strategy for the economical dis 
development is going to be as well improving the situation with the reforms in Donbas. So I will then briefly switch to the presentation of our policy documents that is called the key ideas on the decentralization reform and Donetsk Lugansk regions in the eastern part of Ukraine on the territories controlled by the Ukrainian governments. And as Samir has already no noted down that the territories affected by the conflict in these territories, they have the specific challenges that is really um, is this is really uh, challenging makes it challenging for the reforms our main recommendation is basically based on that that the government and the parliament they have to consider the peculiarities and trouble and difficulties when providing the key reforms and provided the additional support and additional financial support through the provision of reforms i know there are many different mechanisms that can be used for that and it's really good that the strategy for the economical development of donetsk and lugansk region is going to consider that as well why we have decided to concentrate our attention, attention to the decentralization reform? Because it is the main reform based to all of the other reforms. All of the reforms are being under the influence of the decentralization reform. The main peculiarity in Donetsk and Lugansk regions is the creating the civil and military administration, CMAs, at the territories of the communities or cities. The CMAs have been presupposed as the temporary law authorities. They already present there for seven years and more, and they they have substituted the local authorities and local governments for an unidentified time period. The people of the local territories are not invited to uh, work with the head of the SM CMAs. And you know, they are being um, appointed as the representatives of the law enforcement or the military in those regions, but they still should cope with the number of social, economical, educational, and other issues of the providing life for the community. Thus, it means that the welfare of the local community is going to be dependable on the personal and professional qualities of the head of the CMAs that are concentrating the full power in their hands. And of course, in our opinion, it creates the strong risks for the local democracy that has already been voiced out by the collaboration of the local community organization in Donetsk and Lugansk with the um, local administrations, local CMAs. Um, there has been the postponement of the certain decision making while creating the new BCA CMAs and while uh, providing the new heads for them. It had caused some serious problems on the providing the additional management in bodies in the communities when providing the medical services, educational services, the postponement of the salaries for the different social workers. So we have recommended to the Parliament of Ukraine and the Office of the President of Ukraine to amend the, the legislation on the CMAs after the certain uh, consultations will take place on including the democracy principle of management and social responsibility into those uh, into those uh, draft laws as well. What do we mean by that? We need. We believe that we need to have a stronger participation for the representatives of local communities in uh, choosing the heads of the CMAs, creating the mechanisms of the um, accountability and reporting mechanism for the heads of the CMAs towards the community, and uh, providing the mechanisms for the communities to participate in the decision making through the highly effective feedback mechanisms, uh, the petitions, the claims of the um, citizens, advisors on humanitarian and social issues, for example, improving the communication between the CMAs and the local communities by introducing the institutes of the elders and the elders counties. Unfortunately, it's not been included in the legislation on CMAs. And also the Ministry of the Reintegration of the Temporarily Occupied Territories, the Ministry of the Territorial Development in the community collaboration with the local authority, it is very important to provide the professional training and the capacity building for the main workers of the CMAs with uh, providing the support of the international organization. Because basically we understand that we need the experience and knowledge in order to provide the very good welfare for the community in all of the spheres. And of course, we're analyzing in our document the peculiarities of implementations of some other key reforms in Donetsk and Lugansk regions. Speaking on the providing for the transportation freedom and the accessibility for the basic services, the services that the uh, residents of the non-governmental controlled territories are trespassing the contact line. We have some positive movements into this direction. We're really grateful to the Parliament of Ukraine for helping us with the support in this decision. On the 21st 
June um, this year, there was a draft law 5728 on the amendments to the quarantine measures. It's basically, there is going to be the taking down the fines for our citizens they are forced are forced to violate the procedure of uh, trespassing to the non, non to the governmental controlled territories that are forced to do that uh, during the time that has been uh, that has been uh, blocked the checkpoints by the de facto the occupational government there are some three acts and it's been connected to the pandemic still so we what we are recommending we are recommending to provide the amendments to Article 204.2 on the administrative violations so that the people haven't been fined in all of the possible situations during the period of the limited functioning or blocking of the checkpoints. Another recommendation is to provide the full functionality for all of the checkpoints with all of the needed sanitary and anti-epidemic measures to be held on and provide the availability of the basic services. As Alexei has already said, there has been a lot of things that have been done by the ministry already. A lot of plans are still there. So we keep on moving into this direction. Another point is to take down the existing system of the e-permissions to cross the line of contact, or if it's going to be preserved, to presuppose no time limits, no due times for those permissions. There has to be a very clear and understandable procedures of obtaining those permits. And the final thing in this sphere, we're supporting the governmental actions on the temporary, on the on the temporary uh, needs for the people to upload uh, the DIVDOMA program uh, up for when they're trespassing the territory of Ukraine. If this regime is going to be introduced once again, then we need to presuppose the alternative solutions for the civil people who do not have the connection to internet or who do not have smartphones or they do have some technical issues with the mobile app. Because we know mostly that most of the people who are coming to the territories controlled by Ukraine are now mostly the people of the senior Senior population, and then most of them are not able to use or might not have the smartphones. For the right for the pension provision, we recommend the Parliament and the Cabinet of Ministries not to require the registration as an IDP as one of the conditions to uh, exercise the right for pension. It will be one of the good opportunities for the people who live on the territories not under governmental control to receive their pension. For example, Draft Law 2083D and also to identify the procedure and the postponement of the payment for all of the pensions that haven't been paid with all of the needed financial resources allocated for that. It is very important to design and to have amendments for the uh, for the law 1058 and additional bylaws on providing the alternative ways of verification for the non-mobility pensioners group that live on the territories controlled by the Ukrainian government. We need to use the potential of the digital transfer transformation of the society that has been highly implemented in our country nowadays to provide the opportunity for our citizens that living on the, in the territory is not under Ukrainian governmental control to provide their additional services, providing the third party services or providing the alternative variants for them to receive their social support. Speaking on the medical services reform, in this sphere, we have outlined the number of problems as in addition to all of the other uh, problems that exist in the territory of Ukraine, including COVID. I will just outline them very briefly. Uh, based on the um, Medical Del Mundo's organization um, information, we have a lot of people with a really low income based in the territory of Donetsk and Lugansk region. 79% of people have outlined that the medication for them is too expensive. So even the access of these people to the minimum medical services is under serious threats. 51% of the respondents have mentioned that the medical reform is going to be ne will have negative influence on the provision of the medical services, and 57% are dissatisfied with the medical services provision. Another serious problem, Maria, just uh, just a minute or two, just if you have this two minutes, yes, two minutes, please. And the closure of the medical establishment and the lack of the sustainable financial support has added up to additional problems that have already existed. The bad transportation system, the safety risks, the lack of the internet access, and it is very acute problems for the um, 
rural areas and the isolated settlements. The, some, the ambulances can no access to some certain um, settlements and sometimes there have been the safety issues of reaching these regions. Um, there is the lack of the medical personnel, the young people, they do not work to war there. Mostly we have pensioners and people of their pensional age, the lack of pharmacies, the lack of the family doctors or a lot of distance to get to those regions. So we are in recommending the Ministry of Healthcare to first of all, not to decrease the number of the primary medical services in the local, in the regions of Donetsk and Lugansk regions, to provide additional quotients uh, for um, the established medical establishments on the contact line to support the provision of the decree of the Cabinet of Ministry 486 to provide additional money by allocating additional money for additional incentives for the for the people and medical establishment that work on the contact line and to create the additional program for engaging and inviting the medical professionals to the um, territories of Lugansk and Donetsk regions. We recommend also to support the power policies and um, additional practices so that the IDPs would be the full um, citizens of the community and to participate in the development of the communities to create additional advisory bodies for the participation of the internally displaced people for all of the territory of ukraine not just in the lugansk and donetsk regions and to also approve the new strategy of the integration of the idps for 21 2023 and to provide the development and implementation of the action plan and to presuppose the needed expenses in the state budget and just the Final thing, the final recommendations. We had a certain recommendations um, in the context of the reform, the provision of the social services. It is very important to empower the collaboration between the non governmental service providers and the local authorities and the CMAs. It is very important to improve the local legislation in the sphere of the humanitarian support. For example, the draft law on the humanitarian aid and the tax code so that we would support the activities of the humanitarian organization and provide the penetration of the internet to the, on the all over the territory of Ukraine as one of the way for providing the additional support for Donetsk and Lugansk regions and to support the internet subvention programs for the local communities. And I would like to add up that up up till June 8, we're going to publish the final text, both in English and Ukrainian. We're definitely going to consider the results of our current discussion. And in a year before the next conference on reforms in Ukraine, we're going to evaluate whether the recommendations have been considered. Thank you very much for your attention, and I wish for the productive discussion to all of us. Yes, thank you very much, Maria, for representing this report, and thank you very much for this attention to those outlines and those thought that have already been voiced out on the overall work of the checkpoints, for example, and uh, for the overall situation and for the reforms of the administrative services. Uh, there has been a very great framework in your report that has been outlined, and it's basically we understand that we will not able to cover everything, but you've tried to do that, and thank you very much for all of the efforts that you've invested in producing this report. So now uh, I would like to pass the floor to Vitaly Bazim, the member of the Parliament of Ukraine, the member of the Committee of Organization of the Local Authorities and the Local um, Development and the Urbanism. So basically, I had a personal question for you, because in the recommendations that have been said and that have been voiced out, there are, for example, um, providing the competition for the certain positions, uh, for example, the heads of the CMAs or the deputies of the CMAs, even on the level of the administration, local administration, we do not uh, have its power and do not have its mandate to those heads of the CMAs. There is an overall issue, what kind of reform that has to be provided to that. Maybe uh, you will not just share your opinions to that as well on these mechanisms of communications and consultations as well, how the authorities and communities collaborate in this kind of procedural moments as well. So do we have Vitaly with us? Because I thought that I've seen him, but... 
Okay, if Vitali is right now not with us, I think he will maybe joining us later on. My colleagues from RPR are going to outline whether there he can join us. So having that said, I think I will pass the floor to Andriy Rutkin, who is the head of the Onka Collision Line projects about his ideas and his vision on those problems that we have already discussed. Yes, good day to colleagues. I'm pleased to welcome all of you. Well, first of all, I would like to congratulate you with the, the really great work for the people who are living in the contact line. But first of all, we have restored the Ukraine, the historical title, the name of one of the settlements, restoring it to the historical title of New York in Donetsk region. And I'm really uh, grateful to the people of um, Ukrainian parliament that supported um, the idea of renaming and I would like to say that from the city you can see the occupied temporarily occupied Horlivka and once again it's not just about the historical justice that has been restored and I will explain later on what do we mean by that but overall you have already seen the main problematic point that have been voiced by Maria and we have been working on those as well as the members of the wellness tax force and I would like to say that our coalition is mostly dedicated to the issues of the sustainable development uh, of these communities. And we're always saying that our communities is not the burned down land, but this is the territory that has the huge potential for the further on development. And at the same time, to provide the best of this potential, we need to have the constant actions with all of the parties. We have outlined some important directions for us, the effective municipal management and the development of the economy and democracy. All of the others is outside of our main scope. All of these components, they are interconnected between one another. On one side, we are stating that there's much better openness of the lo all of local authorities and government, the different consultations around table we actually greet and welcome all of that but at the same time we see that there are some uh some resistance in the governmental and the authorities' bodies because of this open communication, but I think it may be part of the, our previous legacies. Speaking on the directions, we understand that in the context of reform last year for the government, it was very important to state uh, the key steps in uh, building up the amalgamated communities all over the territory of Ukraine and the issues on the territories on the collision line that was in some way marginalized. So at this stage, we have had this crisis of the transformation period that has been connected to the transformation of the local communities creating of CMAs that has been outlined by Maria as well. For me, as a person who lives on the collision line, I can say that there are some of the outcomes that haven't been resolved yet. We don't have the people to represent the interests of the communities that have lost their authorities in the CMAs, the CMAs that are currently controlling all of the community and managing all of the community, which is basically the uh, manager of the community now. If in some of the communities we have the democracies and if we have the elders who might be doing that, then right now for the CMAs it is impossible to provide the public control for the authorities. Yes, in Donuts, creating the CMAs and having the department for the local development is important, but basically this are Basically, the organization that have no uh, that have no influence at all. They have a static function to just provide additional information to the head of the CMAs. So right now, what we have seen that we have had we have seen that there's overall decrease of the welfare in the villages, the decrease of the service provision. There are some strategical points that cannot be even outlined. That is a very important segment that has to be considered as well. For the very same village of New York of uh, 10,000 population, it's a very complex and complicated situation overall. So we know that it's a very relevant issue of so providing these institutes of the elders with the elements of the local democracy. And once again, it doesn't uh, go into 
it doesn't go into the overall controversy or, or it is not incoherent with the legislation that was currently being active starting from 2015. Uh, speaking on the public participation, I think there are no discussions about that. That's a very important issue. In the communities on the contact line, there is at least one or two tools of the civil participation. They have already recommended it in the best way. And we had now uh, in Shasta the first uh, civil council that has been created in the community. I think it would have been a great consensus if we would have this on the legislative level, if we would introduce that overall so that some of the communities that might be weak, for them not to be spending five or ten years for providing the advocacy of the e-petitions of other instruments or other tools. And I'm sure that this tool can be a very important not only for Ukraine, but for some other countries all over the world that unfortunately also have military ongoing military conflicts. Of course, we have to teach people. Of course, we have to improve the communicational skills of the CMAs, um, employees for them not to be stayed in their bubbles that will improve the overall dialogue with people. And I want to outline the main component for us, the economy. We have really good hopes for the um, strategy for the economical development that has been developed by the Ministry of Integration. We do support strongly the Ministry of Reintegration and the principles by Mr. Oleksii Desnikov that has presented today because people are the main value for us. That's a great philosophy. And the key issue for us is the diversification of this economy and investments. They're providing the tools for uh, insuring, for insuring us against the risks, we need to work for the people, we need to work for the investments, we don't have any other options. The cheap loans for the businesses that have to be accessible right now. Unfortunately, in the strategies, uh, um, it hasn't been outlined that 579's program is going to be working in our region as well. We don't have a lot of ideas we don't have a lot of time coming up uh, because the decarbonization is coming up to us and we believe that the shasta Ramada a community in shasta can be left off of their uh, heating and thermal heating stations we know that we have to find some ways of how we can deal with that as well and we need to find to work with these ideas of the modern industrial parks and we have to deal with that as well because there are much more questions than answers we had some offers as well to provide the development of the complex plan for the uh, development for the community and the collision lines to reserve a certain money for them as well so that we would provide them the good incentive for the sustainable development that is something that can be supported by the ministries and communities as well and to take down the co-financing for the communities at the coalition line because basically we cannot compare those for the budget opportunities with the other communities in ukraine we have this example for the inclusion of the mountain territories of ukraine for example and we're continuing to be working, we're continuing to be believing that and continuing to work in, in, in and actually uniting people and the successful advocacy of the restoring of the title of New York is a good example for us. Just one minute left. Yes, so basically, if I have been an investor and if my investments have been protected by a very good and active system of the ensuring the risks and very good um, systems of the fiscal systems and additional the taxation system that will help us to increase the taxation that are being used by the communities then i would definitely invest into the new york community because this brand and this legal address in the contract would be, be very good for everyone and having this as a dream thank you for your attention yes thank you very much i think that there are people also congratulating you with the renaming uh back to new york they're congratulating the people of new york in ukraine with uh, re-establishing the title 
we have some questions as well so please i would like to uh would like to uh, ask you that to, to make sure that the people who have some problems and challenges for example the visually or hearing impaired people who live in the contact line they have no opportunity to access the medical support i'm just going to read out those questions in the chat so maybe the next presenters are also be considering those issues that have already been voiced out and outlined before we started the discussion yet do you have a successful status on creating this new New Institute of Starosta of the Elder, or and uh, how is going to be uh, providing with the existing legislation for that? So, having this said, I would like to pass the floor to Yana Litvinova, who is the mayor of the Starobinsk city, and I would like to speak about this decentralization and the overall ideas for Donetsk and Lugansk region, so maybe some of the aspects for the current vision of the situation and current problems and the issues that have been voiced out in the brief, maybe you will can cover them in your presentation as well. Yes, good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased to see all of you, the people that we already known and the new people coming here. Thank you very much for having this opportunity to speak up here. I, I think that I am the, belonging to this category of the officers that even though I understand all of the difficulties and challenges of my work, I still have a very bright vision of the future. Speaking on the decentralization reform, then yes, I would like to say that we are currently writing our history because this is the new step for the Ukrainian history, not only in the legislative level, but for all of us, this is basically the exercise for our resilience. We have a lot of troubles and a lot of challenges that those communities are facing while the managing system has not been prepared for that and it has been connected to the, some of the objective notions the closeness to the contact line for example and it's also been because of the certain problems with the managers it's i'm not trying to be very critical to my colleagues i respect them a lot but i do know that each of us had this opportunity to analyze our own opportunities and to rationally outline those needs that have to be prioritized by us for us that was the first thing that we did first of all covering the salaries for the budget institutions and providing all of those measures I and mean, sometimes uh, even the managerial and administrative uh, measures because sometimes the legislation does not provide us to, with that to provide the functioning for the medical services educational services social protection institutions and others institutions of the highest priority for us yes i would like to say that it would be very good for us that all of the territories all of the um territories would be living in the best way and have the equal opportunities for development but we have to consider the objective realities and we have to consider the capacities of the budgets according to the offers that we have said based on the document that has sent to us before there's a lot of things on the support of the financing yes we have to consider that but basically we need to understand that the state budget is uh, still limited and the con budget of the communities is still limited and now i understand that we have a lot of tools for additional engagement of the financiers um providing the internal reserve service that we've had and doing the additional reserves for the people international investments and we're really grateful to our international partners that are constantly supporting us um i can outline as well that while we still have these conversations and we had a lot of thoughts about every simple about several separate lines starting from uh, engaging the internally displaced persons and in what way it has been done um, and how the internally displaced people are feeling um, on the territories that are currently living and i would like to tell you in my community i would like to say that it really depends on the people who currently live there because the idp status is the status in the legislation but basically in the long time in the long run we have already believe that those are people who belong to our territories and i have seen that we have oksana Ochkorova, who is as well the internally displaced person and uh, that she represents the community that lives in the starobils community and i will basically i know that there has a lot of um, 
functionality that they have covered, they have taken for them. And they provide, the, for example, psychological support for the ATO veterans. They're constantly broadening the scope of their activities and we're ready to support this kind of um, organizations when we are going to be providing uh, the support for the Ukrainian cultural foundations and some of the project being provided there. So there's a lot about the desires of the people and their vision in the development of the territories. Something that we have said that there is the position for the sustainable development of the territories. For me, the internally displaced persons are the people who are providing us additional resources, additional opportunities, because they have lived in different places. They have seen some different measure some different efforts in communication. They have seen some certain different ideas of um, the territories. They've already coming back to us with ideas. So the being active for the community, for the people who live in this territory and the internally displaced persons, it's also important. The pension provision is as well a complex issue. Because when we're speaking back to this territorial local level, I would like to say that, yes, I do agree that the people who come to these places, they sometimes do not have the smartphones, and this is as well the certain problem. But the communities, they now have the opportunities to set out this work in that way so that the people, when they're coming here in the centers of the administrative services provision or in some of the um, even local social protection establishment there have the additional support and help to add up uh, to this the documents and right now with the overall support of the international investors we are also setting out the um, provision of the local wi-fi zones um, where the people gather in, for example, around the snaps around the local communities and city governmental uh, services if we speak on the local on the local ideas we have this position to provide everything for the local communities but those communities for the rural areas they didn't have the uh, centers for the medical support they have now faced something new for themselves they need uh, the search for additional financial support they need additional material support as well and the lack of stuff the lack of people. We have understood that we need to have a social support and the support for the young professionals, especially in the medical sphere. We also have an offer to do that, to support those recommendations because because before that you know we've had this state support for the working position we're ready to provide infinite information for the unified position and it's not just the issues on uh, the overall working centers this is overall the state approach to that we're provided we are ready to provide you offers on the need for the people for the need for the staff in different spheres and we will be really grateful if there's going to be the stimulating program for engaging the local newspaper professionals uh, we accept the different people and for example for the engaging of the medical workers we have established the program for supporting their accommodation opportunities but still we feel and experience the lack of staff and even providing the full social protection package unfortunately the young professionals do not want to go to the rural areas and we cannot force them to go there to persuade them to go there we're all limited to the resources and the human resources that we have in the territories and maybe we would even if we have accommodation available we would be ready to invite the professionals from other regions but we don't have this opportunity for the communication and if we'll have this tool for the exchange of information that would be very good in my opinion and i've also called our local employment center right now and noted down how many people should be employed right now in our communities we have 30 southern population right now in the employment center we have 289 people uh, and i'm just have a question what do the other people do they live in some way they have some certain needs and every day they're buying food and uh, where are the other people what do they do in what way they are employed because we understand there's a lot of uh, additional opportunities for the shadow employment and this is the additional tool that uh, the state gives us right now to fight the overall um 
shadow employment by improving our capacities. You cannot develop the territories if you do not have economy in place. And not outlining some of the strategical documents, but well, um, Mr. Reznikov has been mentioning um, his introductory words. I have just mentioned about those programs that have been the most active for us is improving the peacemaking and the providing their residences for the internally displaced persons. We have been working with the ministry for three years in a row. It's not enough of the, uh, it's not enough of uh, apartments that have been procuring. And sometimes we have been procuring one apartment or two apartments before. But in the co-financing condition, 70 per 30, we are constantly engaging people to this program. And I will be honest with you that at some point of time, I have even over for the IDP, so please join us in this uh, accommodation queue. So, because in order to, because sometimes for them it is not the most comfortable for them to have their own housing because they're also being provided with some additional financial support if they do not have the housing for them. Yes, and understanding the overall amount of money that they're going to be paying for the social services and understanding that the amount of money that they will receive and some people will say, and I'll be honest with you, that the people will say that it's much better for us to um, have certain money from the state than uh, having our own accommodation. Then the additional project, the three V that are for the supporting of the hubs and constructing the hubs. Um, there is additional, there has to be the $12 million that have to be provided, the highest level of the finances that has been allocated to the Starobilia Hromada. So uh, if, or not if, but when we're going to launch this process, I know where we're going to be uh, re-establishing our economy and we're going to have the opportunity for engaging additional professionals for the economical components. And in our document, it has been outlined that we need some psychological support and I disagree with that because we have the center of the social services and unfortunately those centers have not been created all over the place and the social services they provide the psychological support to different categories of population um, it depends because I was speaking about the different kind of municipal institutions and their main documents and their functionality can be outlined by every community separately they can provide the psychological support if it's needed that is being outlined outlined by them. And I would like to also outline that in Starobila community, we have the children's um, children's organization as well. It's not just a don't treat it as an advertisement, that they, but they can provide um, the services, the certain services to the communities that can provide this uh, functionality and their own capacities. They're working with internally displaced persons separately. They're working with their everyday needs and they're supporting them in provide them the psychological support as well. So there are many tools that can be covered and that can be used. The only thing we have to understand what is the priority for that development and speaking on budget and those communities that have been amalgamated after the um, elections in 2021, we will only see the our all real budget when we're going to be forecasting the budget in uh, January. And then we will be able to say what kind of support we need for all the states. We are the small state in the state and we understand the overall uh, the overall um, pressure that the government puts on us and this this responsibility that the state would like to take from us so we're ready to work we're ready to share the best practices we're ready to support our colleagues and to share those ideas with our colleagues even if the colleagues have might be stopped somewhere for example when i used to talk to my colleagues from odessa region that have been amalgamated before and i've asked them to support them and they've told me that yes we will definitely support the you in documents why we should actually uh, learn how to cook everything if you already know how to deal with that. And 
I'm really grateful for you for uh, giving me this opportunity to have this presentation made. And I know that everything will be the best and Ukraine will prevail. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation and thank you for your outlines and for the needs of the development of the ter 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 territories if the economy is not there and what is the overall needs for most of the territories so we can engage the different stakeholders in uh, providing the social uh, issues as well. Thank you very much for sharing your readiness on the additional multiplication and improving your experience and collaborations with different regions for, like, I don't know how about cooking a new dish, but not reinventing the wheel. That would be definitely useful. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your efforts. And I would like to introduce the head of uh, the Lugansk Regional Administration, Mr. Serhi Haidai. He has been with us throughout all of the time. He has been very attentive in listening to our discussion. And he has been in the best position because you have already heard um, that uh, all of the recommendations and basically now you can share your thoughts about the brief that you have heard and those challenges and the, the problems that you have now heard. And so basically in my experience, the Lugansk uh, administration has been very open to the communication and I would like to pass the floor to you. Yes, thank you very much. I hope that you can hear me well. So I will try every day, though I think with those opportunities that we have, with the communities, with the local communities, with the support of the government, and let us just recall the president has been uh, 20 times um, in Lugansk region, so I do believe that with these capacities we're going to preserve everything. Yes, thank you for your presentation and thank you for those rational ideas that you have voiced out as well. And thank you very much for this um, description, for the ideas and the work for all of the regions, for the different spheres that we currently have, for the social, economical. And I do believe that um, the authors of the brief, uh, they have outlined some certain emphasizes for them as well. They're going to be mentioning some of their visions about those um, amendments and ideas. Thank you very much for your um, thoughts as well. And I would like to pass the floor to Natalia Chukova, the head of the Department of the Introduction of the Decentralization Reform to the Department of the Economies. So we're going to be listening to the view of the Donetsk region towards those problems and challenges for the territories that have been uh, placed on the contact line. And we're going to be speaking about the decentralization challenges and development challenges Overall. Yes, good day, ladies and gentlemen. It's pleased to see uh, everyone here. We know almost everyone here throughout all of those times that we have been together through the decentralization reform. We have talked to one another so much and we, that we're almost become relatives. If we haven't seen some people personally, then I think that we have already had this opportunity to communicate with one another. In, 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 in online. So I'm really pleased to see everyone here. And I would like to say that I have also some of the opinions and thoughts about those outputs and recommendations that have been provided already. But I would like to start with uh, outlining the results of the decentralization in our region and in those parts that uh, we didn't have some of the elections going on in autumn last year, but we had some of the CMAs created. In my understanding, that was a forced move. And when we've had the plan for the amalgamation of the territories of Donetsk and Lugansk region, we were not able to presuppose well, that we're going to have this challenge that will not be able to create the amalgamated communities in certain territories. I would like to get a little bit into the history of these issues and start to say that starting from 2016, when we've tried to create some of the um, amalgamated communities and of the Donald's region, so we have had and we have seen that that we have had some resistance from the military and the uh, Ukrainian National Security Services that it's 
We cannot risk life. We cannot provide a certain measures there. And we've had some of the refusals there as well. So right now, when we're saying that there were no elections held and the people have no right to choose, then I would like to say that, yes, unfortunately, that's not the first step that has been taken in October last year. We've had a couple of tryouts to create the amalgamated territorial communities. And unfortunately, there were just there were just the tries out. They were never meant to come back to truth. So right now I'm reading in the chat, there's a lot of authors on whether it is we need to create the elders institutions or should we be developing the local communities or whether should we create some uh, public councils. I think that the more mandate we will give to the CMAs, the more we will try to make the CMAs as the local authorities, then for the longest time we will not be able to create at those territories a hundred percent capable self-governmental bodies and local authorities there. We have to understand that the CMIs, they are the temporarily instituted effective uh, governance. So, like there's a many answers to that. We have to consider the political issues, the overall um, safety issues. I don't know that will be, I don't think we'll be able to find the adequate answer right now. So that's, uh, but if we're going to be mentioning these things, uh, that is very important for us. We're already outlining these ideas and and we're already searching for those answers to to these questions. Ms. Holovko, I think that you were also asked for um, an idea to present, so please, if you can just uh, do a minute of your presentation. Yes. But first of all, what I wanted to say straight away that one of those topics that have been outlined from the very beginning, uh, from the first presentation by Maria Sedlenka, they were mostly dealing in the broader topics than the decentralization topic. I would like to talk to you about the decentralization topic, but the topics that have been covered and the problems of the office and that has been outlined in the recommendation that is much broader than this decentralization, than simply decentralization. So please, Maria, maybe you can structure your documents in a better way for us just to understand uh, what are, are those things uh, basically working with the decentralization issue. So this is the first important issue that I wanted to outline. Another thing that I wanted to say, first of all, I would like to uh, would like to say that unfortunately, uh, there had uh, some reasons, there had been some reasons uh, that the head of the Slovyansk administration was not able to participate in our today's meetings, because currently is the anniversary of uh, uh, the uh, the, the day when Slovensk and Kramatorsk has been freed out of the Russian occupation because it's a very important date for all of us. And right now we've had a lot of uh, the uh, celebratory moments and a lot of honorable moments to uh, commemorate the people who have participated in the freeing of uh, the cities. Donetsk region is mostly connected to the issue of the CMAs because even compared with uh, the Lugansk region, the occupied part, the occupied share of uh, the territory is much bigger in Donetsk region than in Lugansk. That is why we have uh, much many um, CMAs that have been created in the territory of Donetsk region. But I wanted to outline one of the very important moments. The moment that is considering that the law on CMAs has been created not because someone wanted to have it. The draft law has been created by the very objective reasons, and the objective reasons have been noted down in the preamble, and they have been uh, started from the assembly of the UN decision, and they have been outlined by the normative documents on the highest level that had their connection to the, uh, the overall CMAs and the safety doctrine overall. So I wanted to say that this is, again, the civil and military administration. So we have to consider that 
adequately and we have to consider that as the safety measure and something that is given but i do understand the words of mr grutkin that basically they are dealing with a defective municipal management and so we have to improve based to those challenges that we're currently facing and based to those challenges that the military administrations have. So we need to improve the overall opportunities for searching for the new opportunities, for the new mandate or for additional functions for the CMAs. But just for just for make it clearer, I would like to give you an example on the effect of municipal management for the Slovian city. Just for all of us to understand that the effective municipal management is not always directly about the CMIs. So it is very important. We've understood and we know that there are problems that might happen. We have always conducted that and not a single NGO that is present here. We constantly have addressed international organization and NGOs and C CSOs for them to be activating their uh, activities for our community in our communities for those communities that have the CMAs so that we would have some certain consultants or we would have some certain advisors uh, the humanities advisors social advisors to establish the collaboration on the very starting points for the existence of the CMA to get them trained in those issues as well Another important issue that has been outlined in overall questions, I would like to uh, draw Maria's attention to for them to consider in those recommendations something that has been already covered. For example, the issues on the capacity building for the local authorities that has already been created for the newly created communities. We have a specific note to the international organization and Natalia, I think, will um, support me in that so that there is the uh, additional training for the capacity building so that the people will be able to start the certain training that they need so we have to be more reasonable and we'll have to treat those recommendations with more attention so that we will be able to have a clearer understanding for what will give us the best results, what we should emphasize in our attention. And what is also very important for all of us is to keep on understanding the situation, on this understanding that all of the recommendations, they need to have a, a very clear, a very clear implementer of those results. Whom do you see that? Who should be implementing that? Who should be responsible for that? And then it will be all clear. And additionally, I would like to draw the attention of all of the participants here um, to about the answer of the very interesting question, the question that we are as well the CMA, we are the regional CMA as well, and Lugansk has a CMA as well on the level of the region. We are working, most of us, we're working with a limited functionality and we're trying to find the best ways to work under those circumstances. And when we are discussing it with the community, we're much more effective. So that is why we're constantly supporting the collaboration with the civil society and CSOs. We are always We'll always would like to participate and keep on the connections with them for us to keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much for your ideas and thank you very much for the summing up notions on the populism and results that is very important. And we know that the social communication is very important and establishment of the social communication is important because in the end, we would like to have the joint results with all of us. And uh, we're really also congratulating um, Donetsk and all of the Ukraine for this moment, for this uh, um, anniversary of free in Slovensk and, Lo and and Kramatorsk. But we have to recall all of the people who fell victims to the situation and we have to keep on living for their own and to build the society where we'll all be able to respect one another. In our chat, we have some certain elements of discussion and we have this discussion on the local um, authorities and uh, the overall uh, communities and responsibilities they have. You might see as well that Samir has mentioned the links because when you're going to be, please make sure that you will copy these links um, to take a look at um, 
all of these drafts uh, you can see that there is in ukrainian and in english so if you have any desire then you'll be able to add up some of your offers and to add up some of your thoughts but i believe if uh, we're going to have some ideas as well i think that maybe rpr will be able to send uh, the needed link among all of those people who have uh, participated in today in our work uh well you know basically you were always planning a lot of discussions and a lot of presentation but in the end we always ending up with a situation like this because uh, we're always talking a lot usually and it is very good but basically i do believe that if we had another couple of hours then we would have add up even more ideas and even more visions to the different aspects to the different social problems to this brief and we know that the situation is broader than the brief depicts, and I would support to Oksana Bolas because I also said that during the reading of this brief that basically the recommendation that's much broader than the decentralization issue overall. So they are having this overall general character mostly. And yes of course we know that we have to add up to those things as well i see that samir has his hands raised up so maybe as a representative of the people in need organization you would like to add up uh, but uh, before i would like to already i would like to wrap up and close our conversation so uh, if you would like to have please the floor is yours so I've understood your hand the right way. You would like to say something, please. Thank you very much, Julia. And I can resonate with uh, our colleague uh, in the Donetsk administration that as much as we've met, we've now become relatives if the translation was correct uh, at the end of the day. And indeed, I, I, this is an extremely awaited moment for all of us yeah, to discuss within the framework of decentralization, what is it that we, that we can do more and more in the context of Lugansk and Donetsk and how we can support as international NGOs, but also as the international community who uh, has also lots of um, expectations uh, for Ukraine in general, but, uh, but most importantly, the people themselves. Their expectations matter uh, more than ours. And it's uh, from their expectations that we've been drawing these um, documents and these uh, narratives that sometimes, unfortunately, can fall in the trap of being uh, broad or not very focused, etc. But there's, but there's a lot that we need to discuss uh, in general and to and to um, work on together. Uh, this is just to reiterate our complete openness, as usual, to make this whole platform inclusive for anyone who would like to represent from the end of civil society, but also with big thanks for the ongoing cooperation from the Donetsk administration, from the Lugansk administration, the Ministry for Integration. This means a lot, uh, to, not only to us, but to the people themselves to see their engagement and their readiness to work on certain issues. Now, the technicalities, the practical aspects of how we're going to uh, look at the narrative, the text, could absolutely be solved. The important is the intention. And I think from this discussion today, we have all proven our readiness to work together and an intention to improve as much as possible the situation for everyone living in these areas, which is essential at the end of the day. This is not the end of our conversation. I think most of those who engaged with us today know that they're, we're going to meet again on a different occasion. And we will look forward to continuing this discussion together with you, with representatives from civil society, the Venice Task Force, uh, and, and our partners at the Reanimation Package of Reform and the Access Consortium. Um, thank you so much for your dedicated time. Thanks again. And I really look forward, and I think we all look forward to meeting each other um, again. The paper will absorb, um, indeed, the outcomes of the discussion today, as promised in the beginning of the session. We will aim to um, publish ahead of the of the reforms conference on the 7th and 8th of July. And we will also invite you from now informally for the launching of the prioritization framework conducted by the um, Good News Task Force um, uh, throughout the year. Um, and this will be in the second half of August. And I think 
many of you, if not most of you, will receive the invitation for this physical launching this time. We want to, to see people in person. We've been we've been longing for that. And uh, and uh, for the fall, a follow up international conference on the humanitarian situation in Eastern Ukraine and prospects for development as well. Thank you so much, Julia. Over to you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this invitation and thank you very much for those important announcements that you made. I have a force majeure. Unfortunately, you know, the lights have turned out. I've lost the electricity, um, so I cannot see the chat right now. And so you can see that the access to Internet is uh, troublesome for all the territory of Ukraine sometimes. But getting back to the important issues, so I would like to sum up because we have started this discussion and we had a lot of 80 people joining us and we're wrapping up our conversation. We again still have almost 80 people. For almost two hours, we have been communicating and discussing those issues and those challenges that um, our country currently faces and those issues on the decentralization and on the lives of this district and regions that are on the contact line and the overall our frontline territories. I do believe that we might have spent for more and more time to discuss those issues and it would have been even an in-depth discussion but yes unfortunately we're all limited to our online format of communications and we're limited to this list of the questions that have been outlined today so if you would like to participate in the work on this material you have received the link so you can address the authors of this brief so but please do that in the as far as soon as possible and you can provide your additional amendments to the people in need and we're really grateful for your active participation for your interest today we're really grateful to the representatives of the cmas and the representatives of the government unfortunately not all of the people have the opportunity to speak up, but I'm sure that have been joining us as well. We're really grateful to the overall RPR coalition. We're really grateful for your attention to this topic that we have already seen for two years in a row already. And we have seen the really good professionalization of the work in this direction. And we're really grateful to those CSOs and initiatives that are currently working in both Donetsk and Lugansk region that are also joining these activities, very hard activities that are now currently communicating with one another and communicating with our citizens, with our governmental institutions as well. I know that is not the first and not the last meeting that we have on this topics. Uh, people in need, thank you very much for to all of the authors, to the consortium, the Access Consortium, for uh, being the part of this report as well. We're really grateful to our interpreters today who have helped us so to make sure that everyone has been heard and everyone has been seen and heard and understood. And we've seen the representatives of many different institutions today and many different embassies. So thank you very much for joining us today in this conversation. And we're really sorry if because of the time limitations and the format limitations, we didn't give you the opportunity to speak up fully, but we hope that our communication is going to be continued and I sure that um, this additional opportunity to speak up will be provided to you as well. So thank you very much. And uh, if I may, I will wrap up and uh, wrap up our today's uh, meeting. And I see the chat has already expressed the gratitude for today's meetings. Thank you very much for joining us today. Have the great evening and um, I hope you'll have a good hour of work yet. Yep. And thank you very much and see you soon at the next meetings. Thank you. Thank you.